Hello everyone. Um, so recently I've been posting a couple videos on um, Roll20 with myself doing uh, some Barrow Maze and Stone Hell uh, with OSE or Old School Essentials as kind of a focus. And I kept getting some questions from people about like, how do I do this? Or what are you using for this? Or what um, different uh, websites are you using to kind of help you? So. I figured I would do some videos on uh, how to use Roll20 uh, with kind of old school essentials as a focus. Um, in general, there's a lot of just Roll20 basics in here, so it kind of doesn't matter what edition you're using. Um, but, you know, and also if it's old school essentials compatible, it's compatible with any BX, Labyrinth Lord, you know, Lamentations of the Flame Princess. All, all the the kind of the host of the the BX uh, umbrella. So um, you know, first things first, you need to go over to Roll Twenty if you're not familiar with it. And you got to make an account. I have so far for all of my games, I am still using the free account. I have not uh, upgraded. I have not uh, done anything like that. Um, I, I went ahead and just used the free account, and so far that has done everything that I would want it to do. Um, so I have not paid anything for any of this beyond buying um, the books that I have personally and the PDFs that either came with the books or I had to purchase separately. That's pretty much it, um, you know. And I had those already anyway because I was running this before the pandemic face to face uh, for a lot of people. So once you start your game, once you get your account for Roll20, um, you can create a new game. And if, like I said, I'm going from the premise that we're going to do like an old school essentials or a BX game, something like that. So uh, you would hit create a game. It's going to come up and you can give it a name, whatever you want to call it. Old school essentials you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, campaign, you know, super campaign. All right, and then you can add tags if you want. This is really only useful if you're going to, like, be looking for players and let, you know, random players into your game. Um, so you would want to put tags, like, you know, you might put uh, OSR, that could be a tag. You could put OSC, that could be a tag, or old school. You know, you know, things like that. You can put it in there. But if you're just playing with like you and your buddies, you don't need to do the tags. The tags aren't necessary um, if you're not doing that. So and then down here, it's the optional character sheet. So choose a character sheet. Now, if you just put in old, old school essentials by Necrotic Gnome comes up, go ahead and click on it. And then it kind of shows you um, the sheet right here. And that's mostly what we're going to be doing today is kind of going over the sheet and how you can use it because it is hyper flexible. I really, really like this character sheet because it works out really well for old, old school essentials or, like I said, BX, Labyrinth Lord, all of those kind of other additions. So I, I think it's really great. And then all you got to do is go, I'm ready, create game and click on it. Now, I'm not going to actually create another game. I'm just going to go into one of the ones I pre-created. But when you do, it'll look a lot like mine. It just won't have as many um, assets in it and, and things because I've already created all those. So you would hit that. Boom, it would go. And then you'd be great to go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go into my Barrow Maze campaign. So as you can see, I chose playing that. I have a little description here. I have when our next game's going to be. I, I don't have any add-ons or anything like that. You can keep topics in here if you just want to like post things for your players every week to kind of know what's going on. Here are some of my players. I'm gonna uh, if you need to invite players, like you want people to join your game, they do need to have a Roll20 account. They can make one, like I said, free. Just hit invite players, type in their email address, it'll send the invite, and they'll be able to access your game. Um and this is pretty much it. Like I said, I've got a free membership, so I'm not uh, doing anything else. And we can go ahead and launch the game. All right, so you're going to see some ads. 
and stuff like that because that's what happens when you have the free account. If you don't want the ads, they don't take that long. Um, you can pay for the, the, the upgraded account and this will not be a thing anymore. But it's just going through and now that's how long it took. I don't know, what, 30 seconds? And this is the, the kind of opening page that I have. So there's a lot of things here. There's this toolbar, there's the zoom in and out, there's the page. If you click here, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do pages or maps and things like that. I'm not gonna cover that all right now. Like I said, this one's really gonna focus on the character sheet and what the character sheet can do for you. Um, if people tend to like this video, um, I will make more. And uh, I can make more about different aspects, like how to create maps and how to make the maps um, line up with the hex grids and do a bunch of that other stuff. But like I said, that's another time. So if we go over here to journal, I've got a lot, but these are like kind of the active players in my game. You know, there's Aaron and Bob and Thondon and Yara. So that's their characters. And if you click on them, their character sheet will come up. But it's how do I create this whole thing um, that I think a lot of people kind of want to know about. So if you hit add up here, and then what are we going to add? We're going to add a character. So you get this. Um, it automatically fills in like a random name. So if you just need like a random NPC and you want to make like a, a random NPC, boom, you've got a name. Um, I guess Igbe Quis would be, you know, what, what we want. Um, generally, it depends on like kind of what I'm, you know, if I'm making something for someone that's already existing or what, what I'm going to do here, the name. But I, I'm just going to put placeholder here for right now. We don't know who's going to get this character or what the name's going to be. I'm just going to put placeholder. And for right now, it's who can see this. So in which player's journals can see this? I can make it so only I can see it. Or I can set it so that um, someone specific can see it. Or I can make it that everyone can see it. So let's go ahead and just say that everyone can see it. And then who can edit it or control it? That's a different thing. I can put it only I can edit and control the character. So, and if you want to put some tags in here to make it easier to find, like if you have that many characters, you can do that. And it's also got stuff for the avatar and the token, um, but I will take care of that later um, when, I, um, when I do it. So, we just go ahead and do save changes. And then we have bio, which you can kind of edit and fill in, but if we want to get to the meat of the character sheet, it's right here. So... You're going to notice up here, character, monsters, not notes, and settings. Um, you don't really need to fiddle with the settings all that much. You can, um, but I don't fiddle with them most, much. The notes are just that, notes. Monster is if you want it to be a monster. You could actually fill out all the monster stats for something. I don't generally put all my monsters in here. I just kind of run them out of the book. Um, so if I have 10 skeletons, I'm not going to put all the skeleton stuff in here. I just go ahead and run it um, kind of off the cuff. But what I do use monster for is I use it for hirelings and I use it for things like uh, war dogs and stuff. Like one of my characters had a, a war dog. So I just went ahead and put the war dog stats in there as a monster. And then I gave him control of it so he could move it around the battlefield. He could make attacks with it and stuff like that. So if you have some reoccurring like henchmen or hirelings, um, you could just make generic hirelings. Like I made generic just like, um, you know, laborers, like torchbearers and stuff like that. I have a generic template for those guys. Um, so I have that. And I, I just use monster because I don't need to fill out all their strength and intelligence and wisdom and stuff like that for the character. I just need some of their baseline information. Um, so, so that's it. So let's pretend we're, we're playing a character. So there's its name. Uh, you just type in whatever alignment you want. And then you can just do a drop down here for what you want as the class. And even if you want cleric, you need to select cleric uh, because it just kind of defaults to it. Um, but you, you can select whatever you want. And it's even got the advanced classes in here. And it's even got the Dolomwood classes if you have those. So, uh, but let's just go ahead and say that we're building, um, you know, a standard fighter. And notice how the XP pops in here, 2,000. 
Um, I know that um, if you're using like Labyrinth Lord or something like that, or um, the experience can be a little different. Um, it can be adjusted. This is also your percentage uh, plus or minus. Um, uh, if you have your stat above, what, 13 or uh, 16 and above, or, you know, depending on the class. Um, it's got the level in here. You can, you know, you can adjust that if you're making one that's higher. Title, if you use the, the titles in your game. And then your stats. So um, I'm not going to roll out stats. Let's just give this guy some stats. So he's a fighter. We'll give him 16. We'll go ahead and give him a 7 intelligence because that's the dumb stat. Uh, wisdom, we'll give him a nine. Dex, he'll be okay at thirteen. We'll give him an okay con at thirteen, and he'll have a ten charisma. And notice that everything across the board starts filling in. So up here, his hit dice is D eight, and because he's got the con bonus of thirteen, the one's already there. Boom! It, it's already there for you. His open doors is already has two plus the two for his strength, that's already filled in for you. So you don't have to do it. All of his saving throws are here. If he had a wisdom bonus, it would be here. So a lot of the the little the legwork is done for you, which is great. And then we have this thing called ability and skills. We're going to come back to that because um, this is actually probably one of the most useful things on the character sheet that you could have. Um, and then we've got combat, you know, so how many hit points does the, does he have? Let's say we rolled hit points and he rolled a five. So he's got the plus one from the con. So he's got six hit points and then your max just six. So you know what it is. So in his ACs here, uh, it's an eight because he's got the dex bonus. That's why we get the plus one. It's got a stack over here and his movement and initiative, uh, right here can be done with the dex bonus if you want as well. He's got his attack matrix, which is great. His, you, we have weapons here, spells, items and equipment, armor, coins, and notes. All right, so let's go ahead and just do weapons. Um, this is gonna be similar for a lot of the drop down list, but let's go ahead and add a weapon. So let's say he's just gonna use a sword because that's a pretty common thing. What type of attack is it? Well, it's a melee attack. We don't, it's not a plus weapon because we're it's not magical yet or anything like that. And then we just adjust it to a D8 and you can put the weight in here if you want to. Um, generally, I don't do weights. I do simplified, the simplified um, uh, encumbrance rules of like, um, you're either with treasure or without treasure and things like that. Um, that that's generally mine. Yeah, let's give him another weapon. Let's give him a crossbow. So he's got a crossbow, and let's go ahead and do range, and then the damage is a d6, and then so we don't have anything here, like as far as weight. One of the cool things you can do is there's this little gear over here, which expands it, and it gives you a description. And what I do for the description is I usually just put all the special effects. So crossbows are slow, crossbows have a range of, I'm remembering offhand, I think it's 80... 160 to 40, I believe is the range. Um, it's slow um, and it's got reload, you know, and that those are the properties on it. So you can keep it out like that or you can hide it and then just open it when you, when you use the crossbow. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, so that gives you a little spot and you put other notes in there too. Like say you have a magical crossbow and you can put the, what the magical properties are. And like I said, you can keep it open or not. And it takes into account your penalties and things like that with the attack. So if you go over to the notes section, let's say he's going to make an attack roll. He's going to attack uh, with his sword. So all you have to do is hit this D20 that's next to it, and it's going to roll. Now, it brings up this thing called threshold modifier. So that's a fancy way of saying bonus or minus. So does he, is he flanking and maybe he gets a plus two to hit or the opponent's on the ground or maybe he's on the ground so he gets a minus two to hit. You would put that in here at that time. But if there's no modification, all you do is hit submit. And boom, it comes up. So he rolled a 12 to hit. So if you look, it's got, he rolled a 10 and he adds two because he has plus two from his strength to make, 
to a 12, and the damage is 8, because he rolled a 6, and then he adds 2 for damage. Now, did he hit or not? Well, it gives you the entire matrix here, which I love as a dungeon master, because I don't like revealing what a monster's AC is. Um, and the thing I used to have to ask my players all the time is, what AC do you hit? Because they would always go like, well, I rolled a 16. I'm like, okay, but what AC do you hit? And I don't even need to ask that anymore because I've got it right here. So he rolled a 12. He hits AC 7. It's right there. I know exactly what it is. So I can just say hit or miss depending on you know what it is. And then the damage is already there. It's one, one strike. Same thing with crossbow. So let's say he fires the crossbow. Let's say he's in close range because how often are you at medium range with a crossbow? Because that thing's got some killer range. So he's got a 1 to his threshold modifier. Hit submit. Rolled a 13. You can see here he's got a, a d20. He rolled an 11. He adds 2 because he has 1 for his dex, 1 for the threshold modifier of being close. It even gives you all the different little, uh, um, you know, qualities that it has. It did 2 points of damage. And, like I said, the 13. So it hits AC6. And we know it. So really, 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 really useful. Really useful for... Um, for doing combats and things like that. I, I love that. It, it, it makes it clean. It makes it easy. It's great. Now, armor. Armor here is pretty nice, too. Let's say our, our fighter here is wearing plate. Whoop. Plate. So he's got plate. All you have to do is put in here the armor class of plate. Three. Now that it's in here, when we go back up to his AC, he's got an AC of two. Because it's calculated that he's got a 3 with the, his dex, he's got 1. And let's say he's got a shield. Because that's something that a lot of fighters have. All you need to do in here is put minus 1 for the shield. And we go back up. His armor class is now 1. Let's say his shield gets destroyed. Maybe you're using the rules for, um, you know, uh, fighters can sacrifice their shield. Uh, what is it? The, the shield shall be splintered. Um, all you have to do is just click off of Worn, and boom, shield's gone, AC's there. So, very useful, very easy uh, uh, to use. Gear, all you got to do is add it. Let's do, we can just give him a backpack. Description, uh, holds 500 coins. You know, holds 500 coins. You can put the weight here if you want, if that's what you use. You can add it. You can put um, spikes. You know, you got to always have those spikes for the dungeon. So 12 spikes, you know. You can put, you know, needs hammer if you want. Or whatever. You don't have to put anything in it. And it'll total your weight for you, too, if you go ahead and put the weight in there. Like I said, I don't really use weight. That's just not... Not for me. It's a little too too much in fiddly. And then for movement. Oh, we need to adjust his movement. He's now wearing plate mail. So plate mail reduces your movement to 60. And then it automatically does your overland encounter for you. So as long as you put in whatever number your, your movement is, your base exploration movement, it'll then calculate your encounter and your overland movement for you. So that's really useful. And going back up, uh, abilities and skills. This, to me, is one of the, the best features. Well, let's, let's actually go up a little further and take a look. It also auto-rolls anything else for you. Uh, let's say your fighter goes up and he finds himself with a stuck door. Um, you can just go ahead and click stuck door, open stuck door. Is there a threshold modifier? We'll say no. He rolled a five, and it gives you the failed result. Let's roll it again. Let's see if he gets lucky. Nope, I'm unlucky. There we go. So success. Green success. Rolled a four. All right. Same thing with find secret door. If you allow your players to roll that or find a trap, you can allow your players to roll that if you want. Um, a lot of those I roll my own because um, the players don't know if they're successful or not, but uh, I go ahead and do it. Same thing for saving throws. Um, you know, you hit zero and you use the roll a death saving throw when you hit zero. Any modifier? I don't know. Boom. Got it. So, stay in there, dead at six hit points. All right, zero hit points. 
So it, it really quick and easy, like I said, to to put these in here. Um, say you want to make a dex check. Um, can you walk across the tightrope or whatever? Any modifier? No. Nope. Falls in the pit. Well, with the 16. So everything's really at a click of a button, which is really nice. Um, it's really easy for my new players because once they get used to just clicking on everything, um, they don't they don't have to know the mechanics behind it. They just got to know that they hit this, you know, click that button and it's good. Now, abilities um, and skills. This is where you would do things for thieves or any specialized abilities, or if you want to use a skill system, anything like that can fit in here. Um, and this is highly flexible. I think I said that before, but I can't stress it enough. It's really good. So let's say we're playing Lamentations of the Flame Princess and it's got its pip system, you know, and you want to go ahead and have a bushcraft skill. So you have bushcraft and you can set it here instead of 2d6, just set it to 1d6. And I want it to figure out, let's say you have a bushcraft of two. So then I have that. So I roll this. Yay, I succeeded on my bushcraft. So I'm talking that that's great. It's really flexible. Say you want to go ahead and use the classic um, Dungeons and Dragons um, thief skills. So you could put pick pocket. And then I could change this to D100. And I can do this and say their percentage is 35. So I put it in, roll it. Uh oh, looks like I'm getting caught. So it looks like I got caught with my hand in the cookie jar. I failed my pickpocket roll. Let's say you're using Beck Me or Dark Dungeons, you know, whatever the, the, the thing is that you're using like a skill system. So say you have the skill First Aid. Um, first Aid, you can put in here uh, D20. And then that, and then whatever your skill is in first aid, whatever you know you have, say you have a 14 in it, and you can go ahead and roll. First aid, I succeed. So this abilities and skills is really one of the best things to me about the sheet because you can create anything with it. You can create a lot of different you know, ways you roll dice or a lot of different things. Um, you, you can use a 2d6 system for skills. You can do a lot. Um, and you just need to, to show the threshold of, of kind of what you want to do. Um, I put in here, uh, if my characters are playing dwarves and they have the detect tricky construction, I put that in here um, so that um, it's there and they can roll it. Um, I have been leaning towards recently with thieves just doing the hear noise rule where, you know, whatever your hear noise equivalent is, that's kind of what your your thieving skill is. And I just put thieving skill and um, I, I just use the D6, um, you know, with two or three or whatever it is, um, because I think that's a little more uh, simple um, for players to understand. And I think it makes thieves a little more reasonable, um, you know, with their like 10 percent chances and stuff at first level. Um, they're not, you know, we can get into a whole conversation about thieves and how, you know, they just don't do what they're supposed to do well at a, at a low level. So, um, so that's kind of the character sheet. Um, and then that, that's pretty much it. You can close out on it. You can go over to, like I said, you can fiddle with some of the, the numbers and the math behind the scenes. Uh, but I generally don't do that. Um, so if you, if you want to, you can. There's a huge note section if you want to add something. Um, it's set to descending armor class. You can change it to ascending armor class if you'd want. That, that's up to you. I prefer the old descending armor class. Um, I've been playing, um, you know, D&D since uh, 1990. Um, and I played a significant amount of years with second edition. So Thacko comes to me very naturally. Um, so that that's um, okay. You can set individual initiative or group. In I, I use group initiative, so I went ahead and disabled it. So I usually just ask one random player to roll a D6. And then I roll a D6 and we figure it out. And that's how we do uh, 
that. So, and like I said, you can put the bio in here or whatever. And you can go ahead and edit. And if you want to add like a picture or something like that, you can um, for your character. So you just click on it. You go into your, you know, your files. I've got a lot of tokens here and things like that that I've used. Uh, but let's say that, you know, this was the fighter. You know, just click upload. And boom, that's what you got. Now that's your picture. And then we'll go over tokens at a different time. Because, um, you know, the video is getting a little long in length. Um, so we're, we're almost at a half hour. So um, I want to go ahead and save uh, tokens for a different time. And like I said, if this is something that you like... Um, and something that you think is useful, let me know, and I will go ahead and do more of these, uh, because I think uh, that there's a lot of people out there who would really like to use Roll20 to play games, but it intimidates them. And uh, I was one of those people. Literally, I used to run, for the last maybe three years, I was running a weekly um, game. Uh, I'm a an advisor and a professor at a local community college. And I was running um, a group of like 20 to 30 students uh, in a board game club. And of that, I was probably running seven to 10 of them at a time playing Dungeons and Dragons for the last maybe three years straight on a weekly basis. And then I hadn't played a role playing game since March when I left. I, I think March 17th was my last physical day that I was at school. Um, so up until relatively recently, I had not run games using Roll20. I, I tried it once, like back in late March, early April, and like it intimidated the heck out of me. And then I started playing with a couple of my friends online and like using it as a player. And that got me a little more familiar with it. And then slowly but surely, I started uh, to experiment with it and play around with it. And I got a lot more comfortable with it. And now I'm really liking it. Um, so, you know, if, if the technology piece is the thing that's, um, kind of worrying you about playing, it's not so bad. It really isn't. Um, and like I said, um, I can help take you through a little bit more step by step, but, uh, just let me know, uh, if this is something that you like. All right. Uh, I will talk to all of y'all later and, uh, happy gaming out there.